Hello everyone, we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you are listening to this. Thanks so much for joining us today on our Monday Zoom where we make a health topic um, and, and we, run with yeah, it. And run with it, exactly. Um, so, what we said? Yeah, let's do it. Happy birthday, Ben. Um, yes, happy birthday to our CEO, Ben. Um, so if you guys have not subscribed to our channel already, please make sure you subscribe, leave comments, like our like our videos, it really helps us, but it also helps you so you don't miss any of our topics. Again, I, we do these every Monday. So uh, really important. It's also very helpful so you can go back and watch the previous ones we've done because we've been doing these for quite some time. So there's a hand, quite a handful there. There is, yeah. Um, okay, so today our topic is how to prevent the number one side effect of weight loss drugs. Weight loss drugs, they can accelerate fat loss. We, we know that. But without a few key players, they can actually undermine our overall health and metabolism. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to focus on that one. Uh, today we're talking about, Ryan will give us, Dr. Ryan will give us a brief overview of the weight loss drugs that we're talking about, the GLP ones, um, common side effects of weight loss drugs, a little bit about prevention of these side effects we're discussing, and of course, circling back to our live good supplements that can help or supplements in general that can help. Right? I agree. Okay, awesome. So Let's do it. Take it away with just an overview. And I, mean, I love that we, what we are talking about the number one side effect, sort of how to mitigate that with the GLP-1s. But really, this is actually a lifestyle discussion around things just to preserve our lean muscle mass and how to age gracefully, mm -hmm. how to prevent injuries as we age, just kind of things that go along with that. Body composition, of course, is a big part of this discussion. So we'll talk about that a little bit today. But because of the trend and how many people are using these GLP-1s, that those are kind of what we wanted to talk a little bit about today. So um, the main drugs in the GLP-1 category, there's really two, uh, semaglutide, which is Ozempic and Wegovy. So Ozempic is for the diabetes, Wegovy is for weight loss. And then on the other side, you have terzepatide, which is Manjaro for uh, diabetes and Zepbound for weight loss. Okay. So those are kind of two different drugs. They're the main ones. There are some other GLP-1s. Uh, but man, they have caught the world by fire. This play, they are going crazy, crazy, crazy popular, um, especially now that there was a compounded version that was an affordable version while the, while the brand name drug is on a national shortage. That there is the reason that the compounding drug, compounding facilities are able to uh, economically compound the exact copycat of the drug. Right. So that's kind of that okay what, what do we um well we know uh it's a very common side effect that we know of is you know gi disturbances but this oh, comes along with this comes along with um higher doses and and we're not touching on those because that also has been shown that's especially compounded forms at lower doses have been very tolerable so we're yeah. and, well i don't think we're going to do a whole lot of discussion on the drugs today no not right at all. okay nope. okay Nope. So I was just saying, because I kind of feel like when I talk about the number one side effect, I feel like a lot of you out there might be thinking it's something with your GI. With nausea. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Um, but, what, but what we're talking about is um, is really muscle mass loss. Yeah. So it's a very unfortunate thing. So like, while obviously a positive uh, side effect is weight loss, that means like the number on our scale is going down. Yep. Yay. Um, but there's also negative side effects. And a lot of those is the fact that when you are losing that weight, a significant amount of that is lean mass. Lean mass is our muscle mass. This is what we need to work so hard to preserve as we age. And, it, and it's an unfortunate thing. So if you're on these weight loss drugs and it's very exciting, you see the, the, the weight loss, there's really no extra focus on preserving that muscle mass, you don't really notice that it, it's going down. So a few studies have showed that half the weight is lost in fat mass and half the weight is lost in lean mass. So say you just lost 20 pounds, 10 of it's fat, 10 of it's your muscle. Well, let's clear that up real quick. Okay. So fat mass and non-fat mass. So the non-fat mass that you're describing is lean mass is yes. muscle mass, yes. but not just muscle. Most of it's muscle, right? But right. you still have connective tissue, sure. you have bone mineral density. There's still a lot of other elements to that, not to that non-fat mass that when you're referring to lean, of course, we're addressing the muscle, right. but just so y'all know, like if she's talking about, you lose 20 pounds and 10 of that pound, 10 of that is in, uh, she's calling lean mass. That's significant. That's 50, 50, 50. Sure. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was another study that would, um, that would show that one third is the lean loss is the lean mass and two thirds is the, is the fat mass, which is a more positive flip, right? But what still should it be? Well, you, I mean, it's hard anytime you lose weight 
it's hard to not lose any muscle in it. But you're going to lose some, right? When you just, lose weight, you're going to lose some muscle. But I mean, as little as you can. I don't know if there's a I think defined it, number, but historically, just with calorie caloric deficit and, and increased training, you would want to see about a 75 25. Roughly, okay, seventy five percent in fat mass, twenty five percent non fat mass. Wouldn't want it any uh, further away. So when you're hearing that it almost flips to a third of its fat mass and two third up to two thirds of the weight lost is lean muscle or non fat mass, that's scary. Right, that's a huge. That's that's what we're talking about today, guys. This number one side effect. So losing right. that non fat mass and how to mitigate that. Right, because again, that can negatively negatively affect your overall health as well as your metabolism. Yep. Um, so where, where you think you're doing something great for yourself, you know, yeah. negative things are going on. And then another one that I just want to touch on too is the uh, micronutrient deficiency starts oh, sure. to increase because you're eating less food. Sometimes it might not be the most nutrient dense. I mean, your appetite's a lot lower, so you're not getting all the nutrients that you need. Again, we already don't get them mm. from our diet enough and need to supplement, but this is even more important. So if you're someone that's, you know, on one of the weight loss drugs, or you know of someone um, I just pulled our, our stuff out here because obviously you, you need your, your multivitamins, your vitamin D, your magnesium. These are all used to help prevent micronutrient deficiencies. Okay, so just uh, just an important note there again as you're eating less. Do you want can I say something on that real quick? So if you're a GLP-1 agonist user and you've got if you're already a suppressed appetite, because we're not talking about the mechanism of action today of the drugs, but right. – and you go to eat something and you choose something that is say calorie rich, right? Cause you know, you need to get, you want to try, you're try, still trying to get your calories in cause you're not as hungry, but you choose some calorie rich that's possibly nutrient poor. So some fast food or packaged food or, food or processed food, you're losing the opportunity to get those nutrients, right? So right. you're really, really handy putting yourself in a handicap position on, on getting nutrient density out of the food. Whereas if you would say, I know I don't feel like it, like, you described this earlier. Maybe you can elaborate more. But apparently, people don't feel like eating protein or something that's right and uh, right not less desirable. Sure. So, but say you made that difficult, like you, you force yourself to eat something more nutrient dense. Like, say you're going for those complex carbs along with a high protein rich meal, and you go, and that is the wiser decision. But I think, I think the challenge is that people just aren't craving those things. Right, right. They're not. They don't want to eat sure. them. They're kind of repulsed by it. Yes. So it takes. I mean, example, even if this has nothing to do with the drugs, say you're just really not that hungry. Right. But you know you need to eat. It's lunchtime. Sure. And to think about eating that five-ounce portion portion of like a chicken breast is kind of like, whoa, right? Just wait, if you're not hungry, if you have no appetite, it, it's just totally not appetizing. So you go for something that's a little bit like easier to eat. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know what. Or but, sweetened or, or something sweetened, that hits the, the Or maybe just right. a piece of fruit, which mm -hmm. fruit is healthy. But again, you're not getting – the, the protein in the, that you need. So, and again, I just, yes, we're talking about weight loss drugs, but this goes with anything with mm. like weight loss too. Um, Cause with weight loss, again, comes a significant portion of fat mass. I mean, I'm sorry, muscle mass. So I want to talk a lot about the prevention because there are things that you can do. So we're not saying take the drug, don't take the drug. We're not your doctor. We don't make these decisions. Um, there's pros and cons you know, for, for both sides. Uh, I don't know. For many of you, you might know, we actually do have a live good clinic mm -hmm. side where we do um, sell the weight loss drugs. And this is just to help because um, we, we know that there's a powerful effect. And honestly, guys, like obesity is, is a problem. And with obesity comes all other kinds of health conditions, heart disease, diabetes, um, Alzheimer's, like it's all there. So if, if they can be used to help get that weight jump down mm -hmm. and jumpstart it and get rid of some of those, you know, negative health conditions. I mean, it, it's a positive, it's a win-win, but just doing it, we're, we're wanting to help you do it the right way. But yep. also we started a live good clinic to help educate you on if you yeah, are exactly. taking it, what you need to do with taking it yep. as well as help save you some money. Cause um, they can be very expensive. No doubt. So that was just a little yep. shameless plug right there, but yeah. um, okay. Fine. Right. So prevention. A couple of big, big, big players here. Number one is resistance training. Resistance training, guys, is is weights, resistance bands. I mean, you've got to be working to build muscle. Yes. So if you are one that exercises all the time and now you're taking the drugs and that weight loss is sore, and switch your exercise if you're doing a lot of cardio. Um, I, cardio is great, right? But you really need to get on that muscle mass. You need to preserve it. You need to build it. So resistance training. I mean, two to four times a week. I, I hate saying two because I'm really more of a fan of like four, 
but um, I understand that everybody's different. So really challenge those muscles, lift the weights, exercise is so important during this time. Mm -hmm. um, in All time. <laughs> yeah. Load bearing. If you're going to do like, let's just pick it. If you're going to do four days a week, a load of resistance training, at least two, two days, lower limbs. I, I is, I'm a, that's just my opinion, guys. I'm just, putting, but there's so much that needs to be built in our, in our, from our glutes to our quads or hamstrings, just in our leg and leg muscles for stability there's purposes, for balance. There. <laughs> there's a lot of muscle down there. Um, but you're not going to get it by just doing aerobic exercise only just right. cardio. So you need to be building, muscle preserving muscle with resistance and load load right, bearing exactly exercises. And, and it's stuff that like it can be done anywhere you know whether you just order off of amazon for 15 bucks a pack of bands or whether you order some weights or have some weights i mean you don't have to be going to a gym to do this but you need to tax your muscles um and then another big one is protein consumption okay so for sure the biggest thing is like you're already you're at a caloric calorie deficit when you go on these drugs right you're eating less Mm -hmm. You are not hungry. Um, so with that calorie deficit, if you can continue that calorie deficit, but without a protein deficit, okay, that means do not decrease your protein consumption. And I say a lot, and I know that I'm on the higher end of protein, but you know, on average, one gram of protein per one pound of body weight. And I know this is on the high end. Um, I understand. But if you can maintain that, and that's per pound of your ideal body weight, so if you're 200 pounds and you're trying to get to 150, don't base this on 200. Um, if you can maintain that protein consumption, you're, you're going to be so much better off. So that's where um, I'm going to pull into our supplementation to supplements that can help while we're talking about this because it just makes sense. I think you need to do supplements to get there. I mean, unless it, you're yeah, exactly. Uh, wake, you know, going crazy on your right. But I also your, think, too, especially on the, if you don't have much of an appetite, it's very easy to drink a shake. It's very easy to drink a hundred calorie protein shake. So each right. of our protein powders, the chocolate vanilla, both are a hundred calories, but have 20 grams of protein. So it's very easy to do that because it doesn't necessarily fill you up. So you could mix it simply with water. You can have it a couple times a day, two times, you know, in between each meal, maybe that's, there you go, an extra 40 grams of protein. So the protein powders are huge in helping you um, achieve your protein goals um, while in a calorie caloric deficit. Uh, a few other key players is our essential aminos. I know a post just went out today of our CEO, Ben, discussing how much he uh, loves his aminos. We feel the same way. Won't go a day without. Um, it, they are so crucial for muscle prevention and putting on muscle. And it's just a calorie-free powder that you just need to take a couple times a day, one to two even three times, three times yeah. Today. I mean, it's especially if you're on the GLP ones, especially if you're in caloric deficit, because again, these aminos, free form amino acids between I usually say like between meals or in a fasted state, or when you're seriously just not hungry at all, at least this will still help the body go into muscle protein synthesis, which will not which which means the body will not start breaking down its muscle to free up the amino acids that it needs for other things, for other metabolic processes. You have to use the free form. You have to if you're on gp1 and you're not eating if you're in a caloric deficit there this is like a secret weapon for you guys yeah and again very for everybody easy, very easy honestly to do. yes it really should be for everybody just but be even more focused um increasing your dose again one to three times a day it it really will be a game changer for you and also adding in our creatine hmb we know how important creatine is we, we emphasize a lot on the brain health aspect of creatine just because a lot of that's the unknown many people don't know that we do know of creatine as to help with muscle building, but mm -hmm. together, and I like to combine the two. So this is, this is such a good combo. Just one scoop a day can really help you. And then another big thing is, is monitoring this. So how do we monitor it? Uh, body composition analyzers. Uh, some doctor's offices good have point. them, but you can also get one of those scales online. Now there's percent errors. They're not perfect, but it's going to help you mark where you are. So say, you're going to go on the medication, we'll go on the drug. You're going to stay on the scale, take your body composition, see your muscle mass and your fat mass. Mm -hmm. Then measure yourself, measure yourself weak. I don't want you crazy about it, but you need to know where you're at. So if you start to see that you're significantly dropping in muscle mass, that is a red flag that you need to really amp up your protein, amp up your resistance training, take your supplements, a uh, huge thing. Um, I know a body composition scale. You just, my parents just actually got one. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get them they're definitely more affordable. Now you want the one with the handle it's bio impedance analysis. So they'll send electrical current in and can kind of measure your fat mass, your non-fat mass, your water content, all those things. You know, the gold standard is like a DEXA scan, but we don't really expect people to do that. But you, 
you can get access to these in some areas around like some local gyms might have them, some health food stores might have them. Mm -hmm. But if you can find one and, and do like Lisa said, get a baseline or it doesn't really even matter when, just start measuring that and, yes. and, and pay attention to it. I think that's highly valuable. Right. Really do. It's, it's good. Very, that's good advice. It's very, very, very important. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you've all known someone that has lost a significant amount of weight on the weight loss drugs, and they might kind of look like they've just lot, have a lot of sagginess. So oh you know, yeah. You know, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can kind of see it. You know, especially the ones that go real hard, hard on it and, and lose a lot of weight pretty fast. You know, yeah, it can pull because the collagen, the skin mass, obviously the, the elasticity is not there, so it kind of just droops, and you can see it, right? And. Um, there's fa phrases for that stuff in social right. media circles, but that's I mean, why the collagen, collagen can be really, there you go. really beneficial for that. that because of the building back and giving your body, uh, again, the unique amino acids that are required for collagen synthesis. Um, very important. It's very important. You know, if you're losing weight, you know, the whole point of it's like there's the metabolic improvements of our health. We know that that's the main reason why people should be doing this. But secondarily, there's a certainly a body Im imaging and, and, co and, and confidence booster to doing it. So you want to do the other things that will help you look your best yeah. and feel your best. 100%. And again, I know we're, we're specifically talking weight loss drugs, but I want you to think about what we're saying today with any type of weight loss. Because if you're trying to just lose weight and you're good on your own going in a good caloric deficit, same thing applies to you. Do not go on a protein deficit. Take your supplements and resistance strength. I mean, it's, it's, it's very important. Um, I, there was something I wanted to say. Yeah, I think that was good though. You all covered, I, had it, I, know, I see I a lot of questions there. coming in. Yeah. There is questions. Look, when you go hard on protein intake, the higher, nor, the higher end, like one gram of protein per pound of body weight, that's on the higher end of what any recommendation you'll see. I've seen higher, but you do need to be cautious if you have kidney disease. There, there's no real strict rule on it, but I would speak with you if you're seeing a nephrologist. Talk to them. I mean, you might, if you're already spilling protein into your urine, then there, there's some concern there. But again, the body needs protein, right? It, so we have to get protein in. It's just a function of the balance with your kidney health. What does this have to do with? What are you looking? Um, so uh, the question about creatine and sensitivity to caffeine, unaware of anything that would ever be, there's no relation between the two. So um, I wouldn't worry about no that. Caffeine. Yeah, no caffeine or is in the creatine. Uh, so I was actually just going to talk about, I remember, I just want to talk about this doctor that I follow. Um, it is actually Peter Tia. He's out there. He's, oh, yeah, yeah, I he's love listening educated. to his stuff. But so he is so big on when he prescribes his patients one of the weight loss drugs that he makes them do the DEXA scan, which oh. Ryan was saying is, Dr. Ryan was saying is very, it's expensive. Uh, it's a whole big to do, but that's the only way that he will prescribe it. And he makes them do the DEXA scan prior to and throughout. And the moment that the muscle mass loss starts to be something significant, he'll pull them off or significantly decrease the dose because he is so key on if you're going to do something to better your health because of you got to go all in. You also can't let it hurt you by mm -hmm. losing the muscle mass. Remember when I said like doing that, it can under, undermine your overall health and your metabolism. Absolutely. So you've got to focus on, especially those that want to do the weight loss drugs is like a jump start. If you just do use the weight loss drugs and don't do anything else, and then you get off of them, if you haven't changed anything, or if you haven't really focused on your body composition and your protein consumption and your resistance training, you're, it's going to go right back. Right back. Right? And then sometimes worse. Yeah. So you've got to take, you've got to do it. Got to go all in. Um, again, it's not, it's not supposed to be like a, a crutch. Uh, you know, it, it's just supposed to be a kickstart. Yeah, it is. Um, cool. You guys get it. I can tell by the comments. You all get it. Thank you for chiming in. You guys are yes. sending, saying you love the aminos. You love the protein. And a lot of love resistance training, which is great because I do feel like um, there's actually for more women specifically, we avoid the weight, the resistance training. You know, it's more and more involved in the cardio, but the resistance training is so great for you. And there's YouTube videos out there all over. I mean, sometimes when I get bored of my own head putting a, a workout together, I'll pop on YouTube and just find a workout and do it. I mean, you, Dude, it's, it's easy. easy. It's, it's so easy. easy and it's fun and you can modify it. If you don't like what you're doing, then modify it or right. skip or move, whatever. But yeah, it's so that's the thing. It's so beautiful. So great that you can just Google workouts and yes. just get inspiration. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. So there's really no excuse. You I mean, you can work around your injuries. You can work around sciatica, right? Like I understand we've kind of dealt with that on our own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are all the different things that you guys can see that this is important stuff and, you know, weight loss and body weight management, body composition. And of course, what, what type of weights and 
what's the scale? You know, so you guys are into this and I love it. Yeah. So if you're going to look, look at Amazon, a body composition analysis scale, mm -hmm. it's going to be all different ones. But again, if Ryan was saying, if there's ones that have the handle that you can pull and hold up, that's more accurate than just the ones that you stand on. So it, it get, get yourself one. It's yeah. really a great investment. And most of us have a scale sitting there. Just replace it. If holidays are coming up, there ask for it, right? Ask for it as a present. So, um, but you guys can do it. So we just really wanted to help uh, educate on, again, we, we know there's the weight loss drugs. There's many people on it. Um, and we just want you to understand that while being on it, there's so many important things that you need to do to help your overall health and metabolism while on them. All right, cool. I'll give I'll give Ben a spanking when he gets in here in a few minutes. All right, guys, I'll tell everybody that everyone wish Ben a happy birthday. Great having you join us. For those tuning into the recording, thank you for tuning in. Yes, and again, we hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. As you see, we're reading all the comments and questions as we go. We always do that. So uh, yeah, join us. All right, Until guys, take time. care. Bye. See ya. Bye bye.